Hey, welcome back to the worm. It's beautiful out here. It's uh, like 75 degrees, been sunny for, I don't know, seems like months now. Only the occasional rainstorm. And it's given me time to do some fine quality craftsmanship. <laughs> if you haven't watched this channel much, you might not know. I do not do fine quality craftsmanship. I build stuff one step at a time from like whatever pops into my head every step of the way. Try not to plan anything out just because it's fun. You know, if you if you do plan everything out, I wonder if this is true. I've never really done any kind of like professional building where I had uh, blueprints or anything. But it seems to me like it wouldn't be that exciting because on the blueprint you could kind of imagine your mind or actually in a picture what exactly it is you're building. I like building like this because I have no idea what the thing's going to end up looking like. Like with my fine quality winter cabin here, you know, was, the thought was, hey, maybe I should build a cabin. Yeah, that'd be fun. Well, what size should it be? Well, let's roughly a couple hundred square feet. And then you go walking through the woods out here and say, well, where should I put it? Right there. All right. How would you make a floor frame like this? How would you make a foundation like this? And using that haphazard methodry, wow, that's hard to say. Uh, I think the cabins come along quite nicely. Last week we uh, had to find another big pine tree, cut that down, sec sectioned some of it up, milled it into one and a half inch boards, ripped it down to uh, roughly, yeah, well, they're two by sixes. I would say roughly. That's I measured them as two by sixes, but, you know, I made them, so they're not perfect. You can see these two stacks, I think, have the same number of boards in them. And look how different this is after, what is that, 10 boards or something. I mean, it's not that big a difference. So next step is to cut these rafters, figure out how they're going to go. Now here's the trick that just uh, popped into my head in the end of the last video. It's actually why I ended the last video, because I was like, oh man, how am I ever going to figure this out? When I decided to build my own foundation here, I, you know, I marked out where each one of these feet was going to be. Roughly, you know, some I put a big spray paint circle, and then I dug out some of the inside, and then I made the boxes and poured the concrete, but... These were, I think one or two of them was like six or eight or 10 inches off. So instead of taking the time to dig the concrete out, I just decided I would extend one side of the cabin by like six inches. <laughs> and it was this side, this corner, I think I pushed back that way. So it is, I don't know, three or six inches longer. In which case I thought that this whole thing came out to be a weird, a weird shape. But apparently what I ended up doing was keeping this side the same length. Oh yeah, because I already had these uh, joists cut. So this is the same length as that side. And this side and this side are different lengths. Anyway, the only reason I'm describing that is because I thought I was going to have to make all of the rafters different lengths. Like measure each one out individually in their, I don't know, 12 or 14 rafters on a side. That's a lot more brain power than I have and more than I'm willing to take the time to do. <laughs> but because I only changed the dimension of one side, I think, I think all the rafters are can still be the same length. The only difference is these will be 16 on center going down here. So they're going to lay like this up to that ridge all the way down, 16 on center where they hit that. And this side will have to be something different, 16, 1 or uh, 17 or something like that. But the angles that I cut on the top here and the angle that I cut to lay on top of that top plate, I think are going to be the same. Or at least close enough that I can, you know, fudge stuff together. I think it's going to work. Man, if I had to change the cuts on each rafter, change the angle of the end, the length of the board, the length between the ridge and the top plates, like all that stuff was, I probably would have burned the place down and started over. All right. Let's, uh... Let's trim these up. I think I'll just cut two of them and see if they fit. If they do, oh, actually, I can put two on one end like this and like this. If they fit, that's great. And then I'll put them on the the, fur the further end, the other end, the far end. Do the same thing. If those fit, then, of course, I can make all of them the same. I thought I was doing a, uh, a 612 roof, but I measured something funny, and it ended up being 512. <laughs> so I'm just going to go five. You know, the steeper the roof, the more it'll shed snow, but what I've found is like, I don't want to build roofs out here that are steeper than I can safely walk on. 
And unless I was going to go really steep, if I was having somebody build this for me, I would do like a 12-12 and then, you know, put a metal roof on it and never have to worry about the snow. But since the 6 or 7 or 8-12, my, from what I've seen, it still doesn't shed a whole lot of snow unless you got a lot of wind or it's really light snow. So I still want it low enough pitch that I can go up there if I need to and shovel the roof off. So this is just my weird thinking is, you know, make it really steep so you don't have to worry about the snow. Don't go in between where it's, uh, you know, as steep as you'd want to walk on, but still the snow's not going to slide right off because then you get up there and have to shovel it and it's kind of dangerous to be on there. So, you know, 512 is fine. I think that's probably what I did the man cave and maybe even the gazebo. And I mean, I don't know, at the end of the winter, there's snow up there. But the upshot is that uh, I never fell off it when I was building it. <laughs> I actually don't really know how to do this. Every time I cut rafters, I have to like think it through and make up my own way and do a lot of geometry and stuff and figure angles and distances and everything. I'm sure it'd be a lot easier if I had somebody teach me one time the right way to measure it quickly and easily. See if we get lucky and that fits. Yep. It's a little bit long on this side, a little short on the other side. It's perfect. Yeah. Nice. Pretty close. A little short, a little short. Yeah, pretty close. Just, uh, yeah, actually, I think that's all going to be close enough. Now, I got to remember, before I get started on this, to cut out these forks I put on the holder uppers here. If you're wondering, you're looking at this and saying, you know, I've seen some houses being built in my neighborhood, and I've never seen anything like that. Well... I'm not just saying it, I truly don't know how to do this. I just make truly make this up as I go. In the last few building projects I've done, I made it up just like this. And I mean, the buildings are still standing, so I just keep doing it. These two are here to hold this up. These two are here just so this doesn't fall off. Once you put all the rafters up, these are unnecessary, but I don't know, what am I going to do with them? I figure I'd just trim them down a little bit, leave them right there. I don't think it's going to get in the way of anything. I mean, it gets in the way of this. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it would make more sense just to take this off and get it out of the way. See if that worked. Yep, perfect. Well, as predicted, it happened. We got, there's supposed to be a little bit of rain yesterday, the last two days, and it ended up being like an inch and a half of rain. I threw some tarps on the floor here, <laughs> and wow, with that much rain, it's, I mean, it's all in the underlayment now. You can see it kept it off most of the middle of the floor. But holy cow, here there's just a ton that ran through. And yeah, there are bubbles underneath. So I just went through with a knife and poked a few holes. I was thinking about putting a layer or two of uh, insulation board down on top of this and then putting another layer of flooring on it. That's really nice. I might actually get a real planer so you could make a sweet floor on top and actually finish it. Anyway, if I do that, if I build up on this floor, I'm just going to cut all that uh, house wrap off from underneath here and put another layer on top of this stuff. As always, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm making this up as I go. And right now I'm not going to worry about it. Let's, uh, let's get these rafters on. I 
I don't know, most people it's just like, oh, it's a stack of lumber like you got at the uh, Walmart. Walmart? Who buys lumber at Walmart? Home Depot, that's what I was thinking. But, man, this is really pretty to have like a stack of 20 boards that you made by yourself with a chainsaw from a tree. That is sexy. All right, let's mark all these rafters out here. <laughs> Climb up here and want to use this as a hold. You can up and down, but side to side, it's got a little bit of a sway to it. cut these tails off but I think once again I'm gonna make all the rafters lay them together see which one is the shortest and then I'll cut them to that should be at least a foot overhang it looks like ah screw it let's just go for it I just guessed that should be plenty plenty long That's all I got. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20. I think I need 24. Well, I got the one I was using for a pattern, so I need three more. But since it's getting kind of late in the day, I think I'm going to go ahead and start putting them up there. Just want to just want to see what it looks like. Because, you know, if it's ugly, then I won't bother cutting the last three. One little hindrance I just thought of is when I lay the rafters on that, that thing is now three inches thick. If I want to nail in from the other side, my three and a quarter inch uh, 16 penny nails aren't going to do it. I guess I could put one in just through here. I kind of need at least one or two more in there. Let's go look. I think I have a bag or a box of big nails or screws or something that I collected from one of the restores. The, uh, <laughs> the used nail store as I, as I think of it. I think there might be something in here. Well, got some massive ones. Ooh, those would work. Spiral galvanized. I don't think there are enough of them, though. Ooh. Yeah. Look at those. Five inches. Sweet. Those would be perfect. And whenever I see weird stuff like, oh, five inch nails, 10 inch nails, you know, 12 inch bolts, I always buy them. You never know. Those would be great. And if I run out of them, I probably have another stash somewhere. We'll grab the whole bag.
All right, you ready for this left hand hammer swinging? Oh, come on. <laughs> How is it possible to be that bad? Oh, two out of 10, not bad. <laughs> You know, I'm wondering if it's not worth uh, tying the middle of these walls together. I mean, that big fat ridge ridge beam should hold this all up, but I can sort of imagine since the, the walls are so floppy right in the middle here, you know, you could take them and move them in and out. I think I'm just going to strap the walls together until I can get the uh, ceiling uh, joists up there to hold the walls together. I kept going back and forth between putting a normal ceiling in here that's like eight or nine feet up, whatever these uh, walls end up being, and then just leaving it open all the way up. I think it's cool to leave it open, but the whole point of this is to be able to hold heat in and have a very low propane bill in the winter, not have to run a heater all the time. So I think I, think I decided to kind of split the difference. Yeah, I just think it'd look cool to have it, the walls go up and then the ceiling come out and then go across. I don't know that I've ever seen that before, but that ain't gonna stop me. This is so fun that I'm already an hour past when I usually cut off for the day, but I kind of <laughs> can't stop myself. It's, listen, I'm going to keep saying this because it just keeps coming up in my head. It's astounding doing this, how much of the time goes into making the lumber, cutting the trees, hauling all the mill and stuff out, actually milling it, getting it back up here, cutting it, cutting it into two by fours and putting it together is nothing. I mean, as far as this thing is built right now, I bet I could do it by myself with the lumber laying here in a couple days. It's nothing. And I bet I'll have, by the time this is done, I'll have at least three months probably into making all the lumber, which is great. Of course, it's not a complaint. It's just an observation. More than anything, it's just the amazement of how fast you can throw this stuff together once you got the lumber laying there. So fun. Ooh, I hit the other nail. Did I? No, it's a knot. Stupid knots. This is pretty knotty. I tried to, when I made these, I tried to cut around some of the knots, but some of them are pretty huge. Oh well. That's a good thing I used two by sixes instead of two by fours, because half of them will probably fail. God, that's a good knot.
Well, there goes my stack of lumber. Got to go make some more. I think we need one, two, oh, three, four. Whoa, wait a minute. Somebody around here is not very good at counting. <laughs> wonder who that is. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, I just needed more than I thought. So I got to make one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've already got one that I'm using for the pattern. So we got to go rip up five more. That just doesn't seem right. Did I use something wrong? Of course I did something wrong. We'll find out what it was later. I is not a smart man. I don't read much book. But I listen to a lot. Oh, you know? Maybe it doesn't matter. My pile's getting a little bit thin over there. And what do I have left to frame? I'm still gotta put the ceiling joist. Are they called ceiling joists from here to here to connect the walls? So that's another, I think I'm gonna do that out of two by fours probably. And like I said, they're not gonna be right to the wall there. They're gonna be up a bit. So they don't need to be terribly long. Actually, since I have 12 foot boards, Maybe I'll just put them up high enough that I only need six footers and then they won't sag because they're only two by fours and it'll take a, it'll only take half a board. It's still a lot that I need and then six more. Well, whatever. I mean, I just get out of them what I get out of them and that's how it works. So I got some monster ones underneath here. Those will be at least two two by sixes a piece. A couple of huge ones there too. All right. I think we'll have enough there if I uh, kind of think it out, which one to cut, which one to use when. Oh man, look at this. These boards have only been sitting here for, well, I guess a couple weeks. And it's interesting, it's got to be some kind of mushroom spores that get in there. Like the little spindly white, super fine mushroom root looking things. I think that's mycelium. I think that's what's starting to grow on these. I don't know if you can see that. That's another reason I need to bleach these before too long. You know what? I better get out my little Wi- <laughs> my little Wi-Fi microscope and look at these. You guys want to know what that looks like up close, don't you? You do? All right. I don't have any good way of transporting that to my real microscope, but this thing ought to show it. It's amazing how many billion little threads there are in there. That is crazy. It doesn't look like there's that much going on, like maybe there's a hundred threads there. But when you look up close, it's got to be thousands. It's like a ultra-dense cotton or something. I mean, fungus does totally rule the world. It's in every corner of the earth, every ecosystem. Really hot, really cold, dry, wet, doesn't matter. It's everywhere. I think I read somewhere that you couldn't really go anywhere on earth and not, when you breathe, not be breathing in... Uh, some kind of fungal spores. <laughs> Sorry to tell you that if it freaks you out. See, aren't you glad we took the time to do that? What was that, five minutes out of your busy day? Jeez. I should, just for clarity, say that mycelium aren't actually roots because mushrooms aren't plants. They're kind of root-like. And what you think of as a normal mushroom, the cap, sort of like on plants, you have flowers and they go to seed. The, the mushroom is the fruiting body that has the spores that helps it reproduce. So there's a whole lot more mycelium around throughout all the ground. It helps everything decompose than there are mushrooms uh, caps. Oh, there's a different kind of bug eating the pine. It doesn't look anything like that one we looked at in the last video or a couple videos back. I don't know what it looks like, but now you do. Is it cool? What did it look like? Tell me. Come on, tell me. That was a good one. Two two by sixes and a two by four out of one board. Holy moly. Watch your fingers, everyone. Oof. 
That was a little bindy. That doesn't look half bad. Wow, that changes the feel a whole bunch. Nice, perfect size. I'm loving it. All right, what's next? I either got to frame the ends there, or I should probably tie the rafters together, figure out the ceiling. Let's see what six feet looks like if I just use a six foot board. So that's six. I mean, if it was to the bottom like that, if I only had to get a few nails in it, it wouldn't have to be that high. Uh, I don't know. I think that's too high. I guess I already made the uh, walls a little excessively high. And then to go all the way up there, let's see how tall that is. Yeah, that's way too high. 10 feet. Who do I think I am? All right, leave me alone. I have to think. Yeah, that's not going to work. Let's try an eight footer. See what that looks like. I think uh, since those I measured the boards I have left, they're 12 2. So that would work, but if you put a 12 foot 2x4 spanning the whole thing like that, it's going to sag in the middle. And then I have to attach, you know, attach it again to keep it from flopping down. So I'm just wondering how long a span I can make with a 2x4 on edge before it'll start, you know, sinking and making the roof saggy. The good thing is it's going to be all cedar on the inside, and that cedar is crazy light. It's like balsa. So I'll just have the cedar paneling on the bottom and then a little bit of insulation on the top. Sometimes it'd be easier to either know how to do this stuff or to take the time to look it up. I don't play like that. If I do it and it sags, then I'll go up there and fix it and I, I'll really learn my lesson. Let's see what eight feet looks like. Top one's a six footer, the bottom one's an eight footer. What do you think? I still think that's too high a ceiling. I mean, it's just, wasted heat space. The one thing that I am going to end up doing, if I'm staying here all winter, all the time, I'm going to have to have all my water in here. And that, of course, you guys saw in previous episodes, I explained why I'm not doing wood heat in here. It's going to be propane because if I leave here for a day or three or a week, or I don't know what, I mean, I, I try to never leave here if I can help it, but I'm going to have water in here and I have to be able to keep a minimum temperature. So hopefully, get some kind of heater that I could set at like 40 degrees and leave it on super super low but the reason I bring that up is I was considering putting a water tank in what would be what do you call that is that an attic I guess if once it's closed in then that ceiling would have to be tied into that main ridge beam or the whole thing would sag Arr, so many things to think about some days you know check it out I figured it I figured it and it feels right so 12 feet all the way across this is a 10 footer that I'll make out of a 12 foot board. And then the other two feet will connect it up there somewhere. I just stuck it on there because that's where my ladder was, but probably go all the way up to here or something. That leaves no waste. That makes me very happy. And I'll still get that weird little side ceiling wall thing right in the corner there. So the wall comes up and goes whoop, and then goes whoop, 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 like that. And it brings the ceiling down so that's less air to have to heat up there. I think we got it. I think that's going to be fantastic. I was going to put those ceiling joists up first because then I'd use the waste off the end of those to frame the end of the building here. But that's going to leave me with no waste. So I'm just going to pick up my scraps around here and go ahead and frame the ends. God, I love it when it just pops in there and just feels right, you know? Ugh.
That ought to do, huh? Oh, you ever feel like you just can't get enough water? You go through maybe one, one and a half of these in a day? No, probably with other stuff I drink, maybe two gallons, and it just ain't enough. So, I know, I know, the absolute, absolute worst thing on this planet that a person can make you do is watch them frame a second high small wall. So, I spared you, and that's how you know I really care. Got that guy closed in. And that one all set. So all we have left now is to tie the walls together. So I know the, the second worst thing in the world is to watch somebody rip a pile of lumber into two by fours after you've already seen them doing it quite a bit. So yeah, I won't make you watch it. The lumber yard is really easy to get to. It's just uh, right over there. All right, what did we decide? 10 feet? 10 feet. So let's see, five, 12. You know, the good thing about the changing season is that the days, the temperature will start dropping pretty soon. It's nice now, just in the last few weeks, I've noticed that this stays almost completely shaded now, which is great for working on it. The downside is that uh, my solar panels don't get sun all day anymore. I just went over and plugged my battery in and the middle of the day, there's a tree shadow over the entire thing. So now I get, uh, I don't know, an hour or two in the late morning and then an hour and two in the afternoon that I get full sun. And that's only gonna be for a short amount of time. My days of solar are almost done for the year. I'm not a fan. I mean, I'm a fan of solar, not, you get it. I just realized it's dumb to cut the corners like this. That just wastes, I could get another foot out of the scrap if I just cut it straight across. I think I'm gonna get rid of those. It'll take a little bit of uh, adjusting to get it right and then hopefully I can measure after that. Woo, dead on. Nice. I was trying to cut an angle on this end just to make it fit really nice in there, but you're never going to see that. That's going to be completely closed in there. And those extra tails mean about a foot of lumber that I can save which is good, so instead of a two foot throw away, I'll have a three foot throw away off of each 12 footer. And that'll give me more lumber to attach this to the ridge there. God, you gotta love when stuff works out like that. Oof. I mean, if I were smarter in the first place, I wouldn't be so excited now for figuring it out. <laughs> you know, actually, I think we're back to the point now where this is so short, I don't think it needs to be supported. Lot of back and forths for one of them. As always, we won't quite pound these in yet. I put three, four, or five of them up there and then get up and sight down them just to make sure I didn't get anything screwed up and wonky. You don't want the wonk.
we had a couple more days of rain and more leakage around my tarps so I grabbed a uh, pump sprayer I'm just gonna put bleach on this floor a little bit I don't know I put like a half a cup in uh, two gallons of water or something I don't think it's making too big a difference right now you can see that weird blackening on the floor I just don't want stuff to start growing and get out of control I just uh, two minutes ago sprayed just this patch here this is really black and you can already see how much is coming out bleach is also a couple years old and I think some of that time it was the bottle was sitting in the sun so who knows it's pretty it's pretty weak I guess that's good shouldn't damage too much maybe won't rust out the nails who knows Well, we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, I mean, bleach works great at killing living things, and it takes out greens really nicely. If you've got like moss or something, it'll really erase the green color. Black stuff, mildew, and some molds, it'll kill it, but it'll still look black. And I think that's what's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna take this off. So hopefully at some point, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the floor. I'll probably sand it down anyway, so. Who knows, let's get back to the roof. This is, this is just boring, you know? Check that out though. Look at the black. It's just so weird. The thing that makes me think it was some kind of spore or something. I don't know if you could see the little dots here that look smeared. So this must have been the part that got wet and that didn't. And it's almost like they were spores on this and then the rain hit it. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you see stuff like that if you've been grinding, see little flecks of orange that get drifted along like that, you know, from rust, but that is really bizarre. Let's see, I still have to think about how the ceiling boards are gonna go on here, they're gonna go on here, and then the same boards would be on here. So I gotta make sure I frame this all right so there's something to attach all the corners to. All right, let's see if we can figure this out here. So, Ceiling boards go like that, somewhere around there. So that end needs something to attach to. So we're gonna need something, what, back like sticking out? No. It goes to there. It's gonna have to be back here. We do the ceiling first and then put the wall boards on. This will have to get cut off to fit the ceiling boards. All right, so I need to figure out how to attach a nailer in there. So what, it's gotta go from there to there? 23 and three quarters? <laughs> this is a lot more difficult than building the crap I usually do. See if that's even close. Yeah. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Yep. Looks like it'll fit there too, so I'll just copy this a few times. Guess I gotta put the last few ceiling boards up there first. Holy cow, what a day. I believe today is a high of 69. And as much as I hate that my solar panels don't work anymore, this is about, uh, you know, a month ago. This is when you wouldn't want to be out standing right here because the sun would be above those treetops just melting you. Gosh, I love the fall. This is fantastic. Oh, somebody forgot my clamp. What kind of bozo would forget something like that? running out of space to swing a hammer here. I should do. I wonder how a professional would do that. Probably not like that. 
Of course, if you knew how to frame this whole thing in the first place, maybe that's not something you have to do. So now, we put the ceiling boards on, something to attach it to. And then the wall boards should be fine like that. So just have to remember to put the ceiling on before the walls. Otherwise, it covers up most of this edge. I guess it would still be fine, but I think that's good. I guess it's time to switch gears and uh, find some some logs to mill up for the roof. Ideally, I'd like to make the roof sheathing out of cedar because it's really light, it's easy to mill, it's rot resistant, bug resistant, but the trees, the cedar trees are so much smaller than the aspens and the aspens need to be, you know, taken down anyway. That I think I'm going aspen. Let's go have a look at what I've already got down. If you guys have been following along, you probably remember all these trees that I cut a few episodes back. Hey, by the way, I thought of something the other day when I was editing uh, a video. If you ever wonder why all the audio in my videos has a lot of static, it's not necessarily, I mean, I don't use a microphone. I just use the microphone on the GoPro, but it's the quaking aspen trees. They have these big fat leaves that constantly do this in the wind and make that kind of hissing noise in the woods. I mean, that's in the name quaking aspen i guess quaking is shaking but uh, i think the scientific name is populus tremuloides tremuloides like tremble i think that's what it comes from is the the leaves shaking like that but you especially notice it on windy days it probably sounds way windier here than it really is but it's just all those all those leaves shaking so we got this one i still haven't cleaned up uh, I cut this one when I was making the floor. It's got kind of a bad spot in the middle, but that's all right. I'll get a couple good boards off the top, and then a couple boards in the middle will have a bad spot, but I can take a little strip off of either side, and then I'll get a couple boards out of the bottom. It's not an ideal log. And then there's also the one tree that I took down by the fire pit over here. And I think I only used one log of it. Let's go have a look. Yeah, this is a really, a really nice one. So I got pretty short. That's only six, seven feet. I think that's a 10 footer. So that's good. I can mill those two up. And then right here, we looked at these. When I cut that one, I was banging on a few of these trees to find out what was hollow or not, but these also need to come down. This is the one with a woodpecker nest in it, so I'll probably leave that for now. Uh, this guy needs to come down. This is all in really bad shape. And actually, I can see one more through there, and that is kind of leaning towards my garage and stuff over there, so. That actually looks like it has a pretty nice straight trunk on it. But man, only one little crown for that big of a tree. So I'm not sure how far that stuff will go to roofing this, but uh, I'm gonna put my tools away and shift gears here and go back to milling. Hopefully, hopefully it'll only take a few days. I think I got good weather tomorrow too. The next day is supposed to be like mid eighties, very still and sunny which i'm not gonna sit out in the sun doing that when it's 85 degrees but come back next week we'll do some more oh really ryan you're gonna do some more chainsaw milling yep sure am we'll get the probably get the roof on in the next video oh you know what one last thing let's look at the floor i think it i think it definitely changed the color quite a bit it kind of evened all this out it could be though just because it dried out but it doesn't look nearly as bad. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next week. And hey, by the way, I don't think I say this enough. I could say it all the time and it wouldn't be enough. Thanks, thanks to everybody on Patreon that supports this craziness. I seriously do think about it almost every day how freaking badass it is that you guys are willing to support me living out here like this and making videos. If I had a better vocabulary, I'd use some more impressive words just to let you know how much I appreciate you guys uh, helping me stay out here. It's amazing. See you next week.